Nachdem es ihr so weit gelehrt seid, könnt ihr in der Fügt Gottes auftreten. Erkennend und bekennen dir es auch für eine christliche Ordnung, dass ein Mann und ein Weib sein soll. Food out for you. No need to worry over me, son. Thank you, Nathan. Father Byler. Thank you. And Reuben. Let me serve you. Thank you, Annie. Martha, well, this day is sweet enough with your dear Sarah becoming our daughter, too. Uh, they're both a blessing to us all. Rachel, it's your turn at the corner table now. Oh, no, no. Rachel's in no hurry. Her students keep her quite occupied for now. Surprise, surprise. Happy birthday, beautiful. Thank you. Six candles? Where did you learn how to count? I'm only counting the years we've been together. Oh. oh. Got something for you. Tickets? Two tickets. To where? To Maui. Maui? Maui. When can we go? I can take off any time after the 30th, and you got two weeks coming, so... I can't ask Jack now. Our caseload is too heavy. Maybe... No, 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 it's, uh... Forget about it. We're gonna be late to your parents. Why don't you make a wish? Blow out your candles. His eyes rested on its face every time he counted the hours of his labors. But shouldn't this go to one of your sons? <laughs> Simon, you are one of my sons. Thank you, Mother. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
What is it? Would you please call the fire department? Our barn's on fire. Yes. So are the Zooks. So are we all. We're here to greet a beautiful new day. God is merciful. I knew we should have eaten them, my friends. Hello? about the Amish. Jack, you must have dialed the wrong number. This is my day off. Come on, tell me, what do you know? Uh, they dress funny, they don't drive cars or use electricity. What do I win? A trip to Palmersfield, Iowa. What are you talking about? I need you in Palmersfield. When? This afternoon. This afternoon? It's my day off. There's a ticket in your name at the Chicago West Airlines counter for a noon flight. Details in your fax machine in five minutes. Don't hang up. What's going on? barn burnings. Local sheriff thinks it might be a hate crime. Called us in. I'm calling in my best agent. Thanks. Yeah, anytime. Oh, hey, don't forget to pack your bonnet. <laughs> Sweet. What's up? Nothing. I just have to fly to the boonies and comb the woods for some local crackpot who's tormenting the Amish with his cigarette lighter. Really? Don't I get any sympathy? Well, Sal, a man's got to do what a man's got to do. You're still miffed about last night, aren't you? Miffed? Why should I be miffed? 
I love being patronized by your family. Oh, it's Scott, Sally's, well, you know. I'm not gonna have this conversation with your back. Well, back or front is the same old song, isn't it, Sal? Yes, but which variation? The blue collar versus the white collar or the endless definitions of commitment? I think it's the I can verbalize my way out of any confrontation, that one. I have to pack. Sheriff Garrison. Yeah. Sally Russell, FBI. Oh. You were expecting me, weren't you? Nothing personal. I'm just surprised your office sent a female investigator. Oh, my. Don't tell me. My airplane flew through a time warp. Well, in a way, yes. The Amish have rather conventional views on gender. They'd be much more comfortable with a man. Well, I'll make them comfortable with me. With your help, of course. <laughs> You've got it. Welcome. Thank you. My office faxed me a few pages, but I read as much in the newspaper on the way up. What makes you so certain they're hate crimes? Three Amish bonds in one night? There's no reason to attack these people, except they're different. Forgive me. I'm almost totally ignorant of Amish ways and customs. But these people can't be immune to the baser human drives and emotions, such as jealousy, anger, fear, the ever-popular vengeance, not to mention greed for insurance money. The Amish don't insure their property, and they're completely nonviolent. They don't cheat or lie. Given your knowledge and experience, um, I'll take that on faith. Any suspects from outside the community? A few hooligans have turned the local pool hall into a career. History of hell raising. I'll show you their files. Interviewed them? <laughs> they give each other alibis for a living. Where do we start? Scene of the crime? Ready when you are. After you. You know, that's a lovely outfit and very attractive on you. Uh huh. What's wrong with it? The Amish are known as the plain people because they dress simply. Fancy dressing is considered prideful. Pride's bad, huh? Humble's better. I can do humble. Any combustive agents found? So far, not even a match. <sighs> no electricity. What about an overturned lantern? Mrs. O'Leary's cow? Sorry, no flammable liquids in this barn. Or the other two. Guess none were needed. This must have gone up like kindling. Look at that. Exactly. So how are the families reacting? Yeah. See for yourself. That's the Bylers. Annie, her father-in-law, the bride and groom, and the groom's mother, Mrs. Troyer, helping out. They seem to be taking it pretty well. They're in pain over the loss of their barns, and especially their animals, who are almost like family members to them. And they've had no rest, but it's harvest season, and they don't have time for complaints or regrets. Do they have time to talk to me? I should warn you, they're a little uneasy around outsiders, or English, as we're called. I must get some points for being with you, not to mention the shawl. I'd like to thank all of you for taking the time out to talk to me. Thank you for being our guest. Mmm, lovely. All right, we can start with a few questions.
You know, these machines are such a nuisance. <clears throat> Perhaps we'll start again. Please. Do you know who might have set the fires? We don't know many people outside of our community. Perhaps a vendor, a business associate. Someone who was angry with the bride or groom or the families. No. But even if some English were punishing the wedding families, why would he burn a Zook's barn? That's a good question, Mrs. Dreyer. Is there some connection between your families and the Zooks? Just that we're all neighbors. And friends? Yes. Could you have a common enemy? John, can you think of someone? No. I see. Has anyone ever made threats against any of you? Oh my, no. Perhaps someone from town, some young people trying to make trouble. We keep to ourselves no reason for threats. Well, I won't keep you any longer. If anything comes to mind, anything at all, just telephone Mr. Garrison. I'll be in town for a few days. Just get a message to the sheriff. He knows how to reach me. I'd really like to find the arsonist for you. Thank you. But don't find him for us. You'll have to answer to God for what he did. We've already forgiven him. I guess I need more than a change of clothes. You did fine. You really think I can help you on this case? You understand these people a lot better than I do. The Amish are innocents. They need all the protection we can give them. Well, they're foreign to me with a completely different value system. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get through to them. Maybe you ought to let them get through to you. Could I get you? Uh, club soda, please. Right up. Another brew. When do you get so helpful? I'm always helpful. You need any help? If I did, would you be old enough? Oh, yeah. I'll show you my ID. I'm Sally. I'm George. That's Lester. Welcome to nowhere. So uh, what brings you here? Just passing through. I thought I'd stop and see America's Heartland. America's stable. <laughs> really? Why do you say that? Did you smell the air on the way in? Nothing but farmers and farm animals. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Well, well I'll try it for 20 years. <laughs> Looks nice to me. Except for the burned barns, of course. Well, that's what you get when you use gas lamps. <laughs> <laughs> That's it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Three barns in one night, bit of a coincidence, don't you think? Where'd you say you're from? I didn't. Chicago. Here's my ID. I knew it. I ain't afraid of you. Why should you be? Enjoy your visit. I think I will. Come on, Lester, let's go. Yeah, okay. Yes, Mother, come in.
was just a dream. Is it, Mother? It's all over now. Ah, uh, local toughs having fun with the city slicker. The local maniacs, Sal. There are no safe havens anymore. These people knew you were a government agent, and they threatened you anyway. That means they're dangerous. Mm, or stupid. Honey, they threatened me. If they wanted to kill me, they could have. Listen, I am not impressed with your blasé reaction to danger. Just what are you trying to prove here? You trying to be tougher than the boys again, or what? Scott, I'm running a little late. I'll call you later. All right, Sal. Goodbye. You want me to bring in George again? No. He won't respond to direct confrontation. He's used to it. I'm gonna approach him at an angle. What angle is that? His girlfriend. Nancy. Nancy Frazier. She works at the drugstore. I can introduce you to people here and it'll seem more natural. They're used to dealing with outsiders in this arena. If I accept the five and now seven, seven, now I have five, seven, quarter, quarter, nine, quarter, now I have seven, I have now seventy five, seven, 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 Might as well start at the top. Bishop, this is Lap. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Garris. Good morning. May I introduce my friend and colleague, Miss Sally Russell? Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Bishop Lapp is the leader of the church district. It's a pleasure to meet you, sir. And Miss Russell is with the FBI Hate Crimes Division. She's helping me investigate the fires. The fires are over. We shall rebuild our barns. Yes, and Mr. Garrison and I are working to find the arsonists to ensure that more barns aren't burnt. If they are, we shall rebuild those. And to assure that lives aren't lost. We thank God for our deliverance from evil, and we pray that he will continue to help us. Well, I'd like to help you too, Bishop, with whatever information you can provide me. What can we tell you? Do you have any idea who might harbor a grudge or prejudice against your people? We cannot examine our neighbors' hearts. We know them only by their deeds. We are an old people who have faced hatred and persecution for centuries. We turn our faces away from evil. We do not crumble at its presence, nor do we strive to understand it. For what you understand too well, you are in danger of becoming. Thank you for your time. Good day, Bishop. Good day, Mr. Garrison. I'll see you at the first barn raising. By their deeds. Thank you. even in the face of crime. That's how they must face any attempt to change them. It's called passive resistance. It's frustrating. That's how it works. How you doing? Hello, Chef. Are those the Weilers? Trying to make ends meet. Annie's husband died last fall. She and the children have been running the farm alone. She sells baked goods on uh, market day. The fire was the last thing she needed. Good morning. Good morning. Morning, Mrs. Byler. Good morning, ladies. Mr. Morning, Garrison. Mr. Hello, Annie. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Your barn will be back up in no time. It's a blessing to see you and the children are well. You must all join Ben and me for supper on Sunday. Yes, and Monday with us. Tuesday with us. You have enough to do without cooking. 
Thank you. You know I enjoy cooking. Let us share that enjoyment. And I need two shoe fly pies. Two cherry for me. Are those rhubarb? Matthew loves rhubarb. Irene Yoder, you bake the best pies in the county. Not lately, with all the canning I've been doing. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. Are you selling your quilting now, Annie? No, it's just dressing. And I know you don't need a quilt, Irene. No, but somebody does. Why not sell them? So why not, Annie? You do the finest stitching and the prettiest patterns. Thank you. But these two hands are too slow to make any money at it. Not if you add my two hands. And my two. And mine. My dear friends. Thank you. The children and I would love to have supper with you. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Let me box that for you, Ivy. No need. My basket's right here. These look delicious, Annie. Rachel made the cherry. Your girls are so pretty. And my boys. Of course. Oh, don't bother me, Virginia. I must. For a pint or a quart. Well, would you excuse me a minute, please? Sure. Let's see. Hmm. Thank you, Rachel. My mother sees me. I was so worried about you. Are you all right? Yes, we're all fine. You look well. You look well, too, Sam. You're not looking into my eyes, Rachel. Into my heart. I missed you so much. I missed you, too, Sam. But I have to go back. Meet me again tomorrow afternoon at Tyler's Bridge. I can't. At Tyler's Bridge. Tomorrow, 4 o'clock. Say you'll meet me. I'll meet you. Another scar on the earth. I'm sure you've seen your share. I have. Damaged minds trying to damage other minds and bodies. Please remember what I said, Mr. Zook, and call me if you need anything. Thank you. I will. Take care. Goodbye, boys. Goodbye. Amos? Oh. Amos Zook, Sally Russell. Thank you for agreeing to meet me, Mr. Zook. I know what a difficult time this is for you. Thank you for coming to help us. Sir, do you have any idea who might have had reason to set these fires? No, no idea. Have you had difficulty with any English lately? No. All of the English I know are friends. Who was that who just left, please? That was Mr. Dixon. Real estate agent from town. May I ask what he wanted? He learned of our trouble. He wanted to know if he could help me by buying some of my land. Can I help you? I just need some mints. 50 cents. Were you in that car last night, Nancy? You can make me wait on you, but you can't make me talk to you. I want to make a bet. I'm a federal agent, Nancy. I can make you talk to me here or at the sheriff's office. Mm. 
That's my uncle. Does he know you almost ran me down last night? I didn't do that. You were in the car. They didn't tell me. Who, George and Lester? They weren't trying to hurt you. Just scare you. Why? Did they set the fires? No. I know they wouldn't do that. Then why try and scare me? They're angry. At who? At me? At the Amish? At everyone. At me, even. Why you? I can't say. Can I help you? Don't. No, thank you. This young lady's going to give me directions. Outside. George is mad at me because I was seeing another boy and he found out. Who? What's his name? I won't tell you. Even if you tell my uncle, I won't pull him into this. Why not? He's Amish. Then he's already in it, Nancy. I admire your loyalty. But you know you could be putting this boy in danger by not telling me his name? If I don't tell you his name, I might put him in danger. But if I do tell you, I'm definitely going to get him in trouble with his family. I'm staying at the Carriage Inn, room 9. If you change your mind, call me. You could save this boy's life. Oh, man. Pretty good. <laughs> you just set him right up for me. think you own this whole town. What are you doing in here anyway? Who invited you? You think we need lessons from you? <clears throat> you think you're better than us. No. No. You can't fool us with that instant act just because it works on one stupid girl. If you're angry at me about Nancy, take it out on me, not on my family and friends. What are you talking about? I know what you did. You really are crazy. George, let him have it. Hey, you two, take that out of here. OK, let's go this way. Oh. Uh, are you guys crazy? Get Don't away call from him. Traitor. Are you all right? Oh. Stand. Uh huh. I'm taking you home. How long have you known them, John? A few months. We met in town. Why did you want to spend time with them? Because they were different. I wanted to know people who were different. Did you know about this? Yes, in a way. In a way? When our children turn 16, they are allowed a few years to explore the outside world. If they still choose to remain Amish, they are baptized and accepted into the community. What exactly are they allowed to explore? They may go to a movie, listen to music, drive a car. Associate with the English? Yes. Of course, we expect our children to make intelligent choices. I'm sorry, Mother. John, did George, Lester, or Nancy say unkind things about your people? No. I thought they liked me, so I thought they liked my people. And what changed it? Nancy. 
she began to be too friendly with me and George didn't like it. He began to call me names. At first, I thought he was joking, but then I realized he wasn't. Are you saying it was all George's fault? No. I said Nancy became too friendly with me and I returned her affections. I've brought this on my family. My father built that barn with his two hands and I'm the reason it burned. We raised those animals from birth and I'm the reason they died. My family gave me love. I'm the reason they're paid. No, John. We're not certain that George committed the crimes. And if he did, they're his crimes, not yours. John has had an extra burden since his father died. He's taken on many responsibilities for someone his age. Too many, I think. No, Mother. He's had to become a man too soon. And in my need, I forgot the needs of a boy. Forgive me, John. seen so many stars. I suppose it's one of the advantages of not using electricity. God's light is more visible. Thank you for looking after my boy and for helping him to be honest with me. Do you have children? I think you would make a very wise mother. Thank you. You're a wonderful example. No better than any other. Our children are very important to us. As English children are to their parents, I'm sure. What happens if a child becomes romantically involved with someone outside the community, as John did? Then he must leave the faith. Or she must enter it. They cannot live and raise children with one foot in each world. But John and this girl were not serious, I think. It's what we call a bad courtship. And are there bad courtships between children who are both of your faith? Yes, of course. For what reasons? Parents may not approve of who is courting their child. Will the child respect the parent's wishes? Sometimes they don't. But isn't it that way with your people? Thank you. Where do you think George and Lester have disappeared to? Where do cockroaches go when you turn on the kitchen light? <laughs> we got an APB out. They're not hard to spot. We'll find them. Before they do any more damage, I hope. My guess is they're scared stiff and driving away from here in a straight line until they run out of gas or money. So what about the real estate agent, Dixon? The Troyer said he stopped by their place. Made the same inquiry he made at the Zook place. All very friendly as an offer of help. Want to talk to him this afternoon? Definitely. I gotta take care of one thing first. I'll call you later. All right.
I shouldn't. Why not, Rachel? We love each other. It's not right. Who decides that? Shouldn't we? Maybe. But our parents think they should. We've done nothing wrong, Rachel. Why should we suffer? I don't know. But we can't defy them. Yes, we can. We have already.
Sally. How are you feeling? I'm fine. How's the little girl? She's just fine, too. Anybody hurt? No. They lost their bond, but they're all safe. And they're very grateful. We're grateful for all the help you've given us. Thank you. I suppose I should get going. <sighs> Maybe you should stay a while, till you feel stronger. Good idea. I'll go back to the labs. Any new leads? We found a burnt book of matches at this one. And? Hard to tell, but they might be printed with the logo from the pool hall. John? Mother. No, John. Whenever we meet people, we touch their lives. But we're not responsible for how they respond to that touch. That's their choice. But if I hadn't... I ask myself, what would your father tell you now? I think he'd say, heaping blame on yourself is the easy way of dealing with a problem. It weighs you down. Stops you in your path. It's an excuse to do nothing. I think he'd say that it takes more strength to accept your burden than walk on with it. Soon you find yourself in a different place. Stronger, wiser, and with your burden gone. I think he'd say, walk on, John. Is he all right? He has his father's strength. He's just discovering it. I'd want to find the arsonist for John, if for no other reason. Thank you. You should be resting. I feel rested. Then you should be eating. Mm. Delicious. <laughs> Delicious. My grandmother's recipe. Brought over from Germany generations ago. My grandmother used to make pies. Oh, that brings back memories. I thought homemade pies were a lost art. <laughs> we keep our past alive. I suppose that's what I miss in my life. That connection to something familiar. Since I left home to go to college, I only see my family, holidays, weddings, and funerals. I can't imagine. Our children don't go away to school. And even after they marry, they're never far away. Sometimes right in the backyard. Isn't that your father-in-law who lives in the little house out back? Yes. 
We take care of our parents in our homes. They're surrounded by family until their time comes. That's wonderful. Most of the time. You pay a price for being close, just as you pay a price for being independent. But the price for being close is smaller, I think. I know outsiders think we're strange. Our dress, our food, our customs. I don't think you're so strange, Mrs. Byler. Annie. And I don't think you're such an outsider, Sally. Hello, Mrs. Byler. Mr. Dixon? I know you're busy, uh, but I just wanted to stop by and offer my condolences for your loss. Your barn, the Troyers, the Zooks, and now the Laps, God save us all. I wanted to give you this uh, as, a, as a token of my concern. How thoughtful, Mr. Dixon. But my loss is minor. I have my family and my faith. Of course, we must count our blessings. But we must also inventory our losses. First, your dear Luke, now the barn. And uh, Sarah married, that's one less pair of hands to work the land, I know. If you decide to lighten your load and sell some of your acreage, I'm here for you. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. You bet. But I can't make a profit on the farm with less than 100 acres, and that's just what I have now. Well, uh, I don't want to make you question your judgment, dear lady, but if you reconsider, I hope you call on me. And when you count your blessings, I hope you count me among them. Thank you again, Mr. Dixon. <laughs> Good day. Good day. <laughs> oh, my. I couldn't help overhearing. Actually, I was listening. You're welcome to. Has Mr. Dixon encouraged you to sell your land before? Yes, just after my husband died, he wanted to help me with my debts. That's a very charitable way of looking at it. I'm not a foolish woman. I know he's conducting business, but I think he cares about our affairs as well. People's intentions are often kinder than they realize. Mr. Dixon? Yes? We spoke on the phone. Yes! Please come in. Um, hi. Hi. Have a seat. You, um, you were looking for farm property? Yes. But not to farm, of course. Oh. Just a farmhouse. <laughs> or maybe even a barn to convert as a getaway from my husband and me. What a great idea. And, uh, what a perfect time to buy. Really? Why? Well, uh, so many of the Amish are selling their land now. Is that right? Why is that? It's hard for them to compete with modern farmers. I mean, these people are in the dark ages with their farm equipment. Do you know that they still turn their fields with horse-drawn plows? Still, they do own most of the farmland in the valley, don't they? For now. Evolution happens in stages. <laughs> You're lucky you got in at the first stage. Now, I have a property. Uh, before we get into specifics, um, naturally I'm concerned about the barn burnings that have taken place in the area. No need for concern. That's just an internal thing between the Amish. I don't follow. Well, uh, old grudges and family feuds. And... Between you and me, these people aren't like the rest of us. They've been living isolated for two long centuries outside the loop. They're bound to produce a crackpot here and there. I think it's a terrible idea. Forget it. I was looking for support, not asking for approval. Come on, you know I'll always support you, Sal. What do you feel you owe these people? A lot. Your life? What do you owe yourself, your family, me? It's a job, remember? 
The first barn raising is this weekend. I don't want the new barns to burn. I have an obligation. Yeah, you know, you're great with the obligations to humanity. It's the more personal ones you seem to have a problem with. I don't need criticism from you right now. Well, Sal, you don't seem to need much of anything from me right now, so why don't you just do what you want, all right? And I'll do what I want. Bye, Sal. I hope I'm not disturbing you. You're always welcome in our home. Thank you. I need to ask something of you. By all means. I'd like to stay here with you and your family until the arsonist is found. I need to be closer to any potential danger. Right now, I'm isolated in a motel room. Come in. The children are already in bed. I'm preparing my pies for market. Can I help you with that? You could uh, pour those preserves in these crusts while I cut some more dough. All right. Why my home? Your people have been very respectful, but you've been very kind. We do believe in living separately. I know that. And I'll observe your customs, and I'll share your work. What about your work? Well, that will be my work. Staying close to you and your neighbors, observing anything unusual, asking questions. I'm sorry. Perhaps it wasn't such a good idea. It was very presumptuous of me to come. It was a loving impulse. And I would very much like to have you as our guest. But? But I know that the bishop and the church elders would frown on it. Could they disallow it? Yes. And if you disobeyed? They could place me under the maidum. What's that? The shunning. No one would associate with me. My own children could not share my table. I would be in disgrace, cut off from everyone close to me. I'm so sorry. I had no idea. Forgive me. I'll just say good night. Sally, Sarah's room is empty now. You could stay there. But the shunning. The elders would first have to decide if there's a problem. Then give me a warning and a few weeks to change the situation. We have time. We should finish those pies and get to bed early so you can help Rachel with the milking in the morning. I appreciate my next glass of milk. This takes forever. <laughs> well, you're doing fine. The milk is flowing. Just make sure you use your two fingers at the top and keep pulling down. <laughs> Cars are intimidating from in here. When I was a girl, I felt my world move too slowly. The outside world seemed to be rushing by me so fast. Then I realized getting from one place to another quickly does not add time to our lives. What's important 
is being truly present wherever we are. But don't you miss some of the gadgets? The technology? For us, it's a question of what must we forfeit to have them? If I accept the television, I must lose conversations with my children. If I accept the car, the airplane, must I also accept weapons of war? Where do we draw the line? But your church elders draw the line for you, don't they? Yes. On the simplest level, the elders of our church districts decide if we should allow a binder or a milking machine into our community. But there, it's a matter of survival. The farms are a livelihood. That's why losing our barn is so hard on us. The barn is the heart of the farm. Russell, welcome. We were just about to come see you. Yes, to thank you again. No thanks necessary. Sally and I made these for you last night. Oh, oh, you have done so much for us already. How can we thank you? May I look at your barn? I think that would be all right. Thank you. Excuse me. Smoke came from over there. The far side, hidden from the house. Whoever set the fire came here in broad daylight on foot. Someone would have noticed a car, buggy. Buggy? For the sake of argument. They probably parked on the road, went through the cornfield, set the fire, and then disappeared back into the field. Sally. Honey. Miss Russell. Bishop. Bishop. My granddaughter would like to say something to you. Anna? Thank you for saving me. You're welcome, Hannah. Your little doll let me know where you were. She helped save you, too. It is very dear to her. She wants you to have it. I couldn't. Accept her thanks. It is all she has to give. Thank you, Hannah. And, uh... Accept my thanks, Miss Russell, and my blessing. I have nothing more for you either, so please, do not ask. I accept your thanks, Bishop Lapp. Good day. Honey, remember the Bible. Be not yoked with unbelievers. I do, Bishop. Let your aims be such as all men count honorable. Live at peace with all men. Ooh. I thought 
field work was done by your men. I thought FBI work was done by your men. <laughs> All of our women do some work in the field. I've had to do more since Luke died. I can imagine. How did he die? Cancer. It was very fast. Suddenly, this strong man who shared my bed was as small and as frail as a child. And he was gone. Overnight. All the simple moments we shared, the moments I took for granted, have become precious memories to me. I'm so sorry. I'm grateful for the time we had. We raised our children. We worked together shoulder to shoulder for 20 years. He still stands beside me. He always will. Sally, you never told me. I told you what? If you're married. I suppose I'm more accustomed to asking for information than offering it. No, I'm not married. But I have a wonderful man in my life. Six years. He's a builder. Unfortunately, I travel a lot, so our work keeps us apart. Work doesn't keep people apart. Not if they love each other. Sometimes love isn't enough to solve a problem. What then? Place the one you love before you. Danny, do you mind if I speak with Mr. Garrison? Hmm. Sheriff? Any news? George and Lester were arrested in Penner County for speeding and driving under the influence. When was that? The day before yesterday. That means... They were in custody when the lap fire was set. It doesn't prove they didn't set the first three fires. You think the lap fire was copycat? Maybe. What are you doing right now? I want you to look at something I found today. There it is. Stop. There's a break in the corner. here the lapsed barn we're breathing his air Sally come in I thought you might like some more hot water all contributions gratefully accepted I never knew you had such beautiful hair The Bible says a woman's hair is her crowning glory. That's why we cover it with our prayer coverings. It's meant to be seen only by our husbands. That is lovely. What a gift. It is. Do you have a husband? No. But I have someone I love. Do you have a boyfriend? No. But I have someone I love, too. Is it the boy I saw you with at the farmer's market? You saw him? He was very handsome. He is. My mother won't let me see him anymore. Why not? She doesn't approve of his father. But Sam's good. He's not at all like his father. I'm sorry. So you aren't seeing him anymore? It's a sin to disobey your parents. 
But would you see him? No. That must make you very sad. Disobeying my mother would make me even sadder. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Feelings. I don't want my work to destroy its market value. <laughs> every labor given in love is a blessing to a project. I tell my girls that everything they do is an act of creation, no matter how small the job, no matter how many times it's done. What a lovely thought. <laughs> well, it's working so far. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ladies known each other long? Just a lifetime. How wonderful. Does every family in the valley know each other? No, we divide our communities into church districts. And since we take turns holding church services in our homes, we can't let a district get too large. So you get to know everyone in your church district? Yes, we'll all be at Annie's barn raising. And at a wedding like Sarah's, everyone in the church district attends? Well, almost everyone. Why wouldn't someone attend? Perhaps illness. The Maidung. Shunning. Is someone in the district being shunned right now? Yes, Jacob Hofstetler. May I ask why? He defied the church elders. Does he then become an enemy of the community? No. As soon as he accepts our ways again, the community accepts him. You make more change through love than conflict. I was told that some Amish families have feuds. Oh, that's just gossip. Who told you that? Mr. Dixon. Oh, Mr. Dixon. We have some English who are friends and some who do business. And some like Mr. Dixon who do business by seeming like friends. Very nice. I'll give you 200. Look at this detail. This is museum quality. Hmm. Two fifty, but that's my final offer. Offer refused. Annie, I know some larger stores down the street. Three hundred. Five hundred. Where's my profit? Three fifty. Where's ours? Five hundred. Four hundred final. Four fifty final. Deal. 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 Hi. Annie, would you excuse me a minute, please? Of course. I want to talk to you. I could get you in a lot of trouble, lady. For what? Impersonating a yuppie or for seeing your other face? No, for lying to me. I know who you are. I know what you've been saying about me. I don't appreciate the fact that you've been slandering my good name in this community. You've done that all by yourself, Mr. Dixon. I suggest you calm down and consider the implications of your threats. You know you're already under investigation. Look, I don't have to burn barns to sell property, and you have no reason to believe, not one iota of proof that I have. I do know you've been hovering over these people like a vulture, trying to intimidate them into selling their land with well-chosen words. Oh, Why not actions? That's pathetic. Sometimes I say things to make a sale. 
Those are essential lies. And don't tell me that you don't tell them to do your job. Don't tell me you haven't told a few of those people to get what you want from them. This isn't about me, Mr. Dixon. Yes, it is. You're desperate. You're batting zero. And you're afraid of getting sacked. So you're inventing suspects and using people. But hey, I understand. We're all just doing business. Oh, look. Oh, just let us take one picture. Would you mind having a little respect, please? Honey? We're just a curiosity to most people. I'm sorry, Annie, on behalf of all of us. <laughs> Did Mr. Dixon upset you? No. Annie, the lady spoke of a man being shunned. Jacob Hutstetler. Why? He built a barn that was different than the rest of our barns. You mean with electricity or some technology that gave him an advantage? No. He built a barn with an arched roof. That's it? All of our barns are built with peat roofs. He was shunned for building a different roof? Isn't that a little extreme? He was warned. He defied the elders. He showed pride. And you approve of this? You feel the shunning was appropriate? And I don't judge him. I do believe that our customs keep us together. And that if someone wants to ignore our customs, then they're trying to break with us. Or break us as a group. It's not the barn that's dangerous. It's the impulse that built it. Father home? No. Do you know when he'll be back? No. Did you tell him I was here? My name is Sally Russell. There's a few questions I'd like to ask him. Interesting roof. Why'd your father build it like this? It is the most perfect design. The most sensible. More space. More of God's light for the animals. I'm a federal agent. My name is Sally Russell. I know who you are. I have no time to satisfy your curiosity. It's not curiosity, Mr. Hostetler. It's an investigation into some serious crimes. I know nothing about them. You have your work to do. I have mine. Come, Nathan. I need you. is Jacob Hostetler's son. Is that why your mother doesn't approve of him? Because his father is being shunned? Yes. And because Sam did not obey the ordinance of the church elders. He ate at his father's table. Rachel, we have to discuss this with your mother. Oh, no, she'll think I lied to her. I think you both lied to me. You've been seeing Sam? Yes, mother. But I... And you knew about it. I saw them together at the farmer's market, and then at the bridge. I'm sorry, Rachel, I was doing my job. I didn't say anything to you because it appeared to be innocent. 
How innocent could it be if her mother has forbidden it? He loves me, mother. He wanted to see me because he was worried about me. About all of us after the fire. And why did you want to see him? Because I love him too. And I had to tell him why I couldn't see him anymore. He knew, Rachel. Don't pretend to walk the path of righteousness while you stray from it. But I did tell him, Mother, at the bridge. She did, Annie. I saw her say goodbye. Did you come into my home to pry into our lives? Were you pretending to be my friend? No, Annie. I am your friend. Perhaps I could have been more honest with you. But you could have told me about the Hostetlers. You could have been more open with me. Hey, whoa, Miss Investigator. Scott? I saw. Him. <laughs> what are you doing here? I always wanted to see a barn raising. came to help. Thank you. And welcome. Annie Byler, I'd like you to meet Scott Lieber. It's a pleasure to meet you. It's nice to see you here. I told him about the barn raising and he offered his services. Can I be of some help? We're honored to have you. Knock yourself out. We missed you last night. I missed being here. But it gave me time with Scott. We really love each other. He seems like a very nice man. He is. And thanks to you, I realize it more than ever. 
Annie, I need to do something today. And I'd like your guidance. I told you I have nothing to say to you. And I'm too busy to talk to you. No disrespect intended, sir, but you have to talk to me. I'm investigating crimes for the United States government. Your government has no authority over me. You are a United States citizen, aren't you, sir? Put another one down, son. Do you think this is a good example to set for your sons, defying the authority of the government, the authority of your church elders, your community? With you have no right to discuss my family or my personal affairs. Get off my property. If I leave, someone will come to arrest you, and you'll have to answer my questions in custody. If God wills. You can't arrest my father. He hasn't done anything. Your children have learned your lessons well. This is my property. My family has owned it for over a hundred years. I keep my faith. I follow the edicts of the church elders, regardless of how foolish or ill-considered. I don't use milking machines. I don't use tractors. But no one tells me how to build my property. But isn't that the covenant you keep with your faith, with your people, that you will obey their edicts, all of them, and if you don't, you lose the grace of their fellowship? If that is all I lose, I lose very little. Look at the anger in your face, sir. And in your son's faces. I think you've lost much more. That is my affair. When it leads to loss of property and endangers lives, it becomes mine. I know you set the fires. My father didn't set those fires. Who did, Nathan? I did. Nathan! What are you saying, son? He's just trying to protect my father. I know, Sam. I think they didn't set the fires. The fires were set by a grown man. Someone strong enough to whip a horse from one farm to the next in minutes the night of Sarah Byler's wedding. The arson has broke a path through a cornfield at Bishop Lapp's farm. The path was too wide to have been broken by a boy, or a man. It was trampled by a man riding a horse. A man who thought he'd lost the girl he loved. What are you saying? I helped the laughs with their fire. I pulled half their livestock out of their barn. A better way to throw suspicion off yourself. No. You heard him. Please leave. Annie Byler told me the Amish don't lie. We don't. Nathan did to protect you. Sam did to protect himself and his family. But the greatest lie is yours, Mr. Hostetler. Because in your heart, you know what your son has done. And that your pride has caused it. I ask you once again, leave my property. While judging my neighbors, I have sinned. I have sinned. Sally, what happened? Well, they were united in their defiance. 
And I've come to admire your people, but this shunning, it's very cruel. We live by our rules. Now, sometimes rules create the problems. Or prevent greater ones, perhaps. Give me Rachel. Forgive me. I've sinned against my family, my neighbors. I set the fires. Forgive me. Mr. Garrison, we are here to escort our Samuel to the courthouse. Despise the sin, not the sinner. Your family is with you, son. All of us. Two lives touch. They can never again be completely separated. We make mistakes. But when one of us falls in his journey, we help him up. We could learn from you. I have. 